I will cause you to obey my commands. Enter stage right, Saul. Turn with me to Acts chapter 8. It's a struggle, but there's a lot of growth happening. And then all of a sudden, this guy named Saul come along. Changed the whole game. And look at what he says. Acts chapter 8, starting at verse 1. And Saul approved of his execution, talking about Stephen, who had just been stoned, the first martyr. He stands in the face of these religious Jews and says, yo, you killed the Messiah. And it really ain't no surprise, because as a people, we've been stubborn and stiff-necked the whole time, continually rejecting who God sends. So they stoned Stephen. And Saul approved of his execution. And there arose on that day a great persecution against the church in Jerusalem. And they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria except the apostles. Right? There were some that were stuck. We can't move yet. And and it says says that, you, you know, a great illustration I heard, you know, you think of baby powder. And my wife uses like a lot of talcum powders and stuff like that, a little baby powder. And one thing about baby powder is it never goes exactly where you mean for it to go. You start shaking it right, and the next thing, it's on everything. It's on everything. You come back, you got a film on the TV, a baby powder. The, the desk is covered, right? And so, and so here's the thing. If you sprinkle some baby powder on a table, and then you smack your hand down into it, you're going to get poof. Right? And it's going to float all over the place. And, and, yo, there's places that the wind is going to carry it that you don't even see. It's going to be up in the corners, in the little cobwebs, and on the windowsill, and down in the vent. It's going to be everywhere. And so, so when, when God allowed this, this persecution to come, man, that command that he gave, to take this good news, not only in Jerusalem, not only into Judea, not only into Samaria, but to the ends of the earth begins to be accomplished. He causes us to obey his command. And so it says this, verse 2, devout men buried Stephen and made great lamentation over him. Yo, Stephen was a great brother, man. He was a great brother. And, 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 And because of the relationship of the brothers, they were broken. I mean, it, it hurts to lose somebody that's, that's dear to you. And then verse 3 says, But Saul was ravaging the church, and entering house after house, he dragged off men and women and committed them to prison. And i got to start to speed up. But that word ravaging, that word ravaging, a, a, a synonym for that is mangling. Now, now, you know, we can say, oh, ravaging, man, that sounds pretty bad. But when you think of mangling, I think of like, I think of like a dog attacking a child. I think of being in the grips. Was it Elijah or Elisha? Who was the one where the kids were making fun of him? Go up, you bald head. Well, that was Elisha, right? Hey, it isn't it? The she bear. Came up out of the woods and mauled the kids. Just mauled them. You talk about being mangled. Pieces of flesh laying around. You know, Jesus' body, his body was mangled for us. And so here, here, his body of believers begins to begins to identify this persecution comes. And all of a sudden, because of that persecution, they spread out. They spread out. Now, now, what they were trying to squelch, the very message they were trying to shut down through the persecution grew all the more. And so verse 4 says this. Now, those who were scattered, they hid out. Yeah, that's not my, my translation says, 
those who were scattered went about preaching the word. Afraid for their lives, but went about preaching the word. Philip went down to the city of, what city? Where did Jesus tell him to go? He said, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. Philip goes down to Samaria and proclaimed to them the Christ. And the crowds with one accord paid attention to what was being said by Philip when they heard him and saw the signs that he did. For unclean spirits, crying out with a loud voice, came out of many who had them. And many who were paralyzed or lame were healed. So there was much joy in that city. Philip goes to Samaria and brings the good news. The most comfortable thing for him to do would have been just stay in the midst of the fellowship of the believers. Let me, let me, let me just hang out with my squad. This is, this is my squad. Let me stay right here. It's good. But, but then this persecution comes and causes causes these men to go out and proclaim the good news to these other places who haven't heard. 